In this lesson, we're going to learn three ASP commands. We're going to learn response.write and what the response object is. We're going to learn a basic if-then statement. And I'm going to teach you about the date part function. In the previous lesson, we had a mixture of basic HTML in addition to some text that was created by ASP on the server. You can also have the server generate any amount of text that you want using the response.write command. You'll find that this method works okay if you've got mostly static text and you want to insert a little tiny bit of ASP text in here. But if you're generating a large volume of information, for example, all of a customer's details, you might find it easier to use response.write and just generate everything with ASP. So let's change this up a little bit. Let's get rid of this stuff. So all it says is hello there. Insert a couple of blank lines, and then put the ASP open tag, and then a few lines down from that, put the ASP close tag. So everything between these two tags will be processed by the server as ASP commands. Now I'm going to come right here between them, and I'm going to press the tab key to tab in, to indent a little bit. It's good programming form to have your ASP code indented a little bit. Why? Eh, just because it looks better. Do you have to do it? No. You don't have to. Just like I like to leave blank lines in here. Do you have to? No, you don't have to. But again, it makes it easier to read. Later on, when we have ASP scripts that are 15, 20, 100 lines long, you'll thank me if you have good, properly formatted code. It just makes it easier to read. So get in a good habit now. Now type this in. Response dot write and then a space and then open quotes or just quotes because there really are no open and close quotes it's just a double quote quote the time is space close the quotes up and then put in here an ampersand symbol time open close parentheses okay let's see what this does first and then I'll explain it all all right, so let's save our page. Control-S to save. I'm going to switch back over to Internet Explorer and then refresh my page. And there we go. It looks pretty much the same. Hello there, the time is, and then the time. Let's see exactly what we did. Switch back over to front page. Now, response.write basically is the command to print some stuff. Okay, if you've taken any VB in the past, you might know that there's a print command. We can say print and then some stuff. Well, here's the stuff, right? Send this stuff to the browser, all right? Response.write. Response is basically the overall object for having the web browser respond with something. There's a lot of different response objects and methods, and we'll talk about those in future lessons. But today, we're just pretty much going to worry about response.write, right? Write says write this stuff to the browser. What did I write out? Well. Anything inside of quotes gets written out as actual text. Okay, I want you to write out the time is followed by a space. If I didn't put a space there, it would cram the time right on top of that. The little ampersand symbol says take this stuff and immediately following it put this stuff. And this stuff here is simply the current time with the time function. This little guy here is called string concatenation. Right, you're concatenating or putting together two different strings of text because time becomes a string of text. It gets replaced with some numbers, some colons, and the actual time. I could have written this as two separate commands. I could have done this. Watch this. I could have said response.write as a second line. This is also perfectly valid. And this should do exactly the same thing. Let's save it and see if it does. All right, let's refresh our browser. Oh, look at that, exactly the same thing, with a new time, of course. You can have as many commands in here as you like. Response.write this, response.write that, or you can put them together on one line. The choice really is yours. For something small like this, I prefer to put the ampersand, and then I'll delete all this stuff again, and I'll stick it right there, so it's just one line. Makes it a little easier to read, too. Okay, that's response.write. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the website say good afternoon or good morning 
if it's before or after noon. We'll skip evening for now. We'll worry about evening later. I just want good morning or good afternoon. Well, to do that, I have to be able to make my web page make a decision. And we do that with the if-then statement. If-then. Let me show you a real basic if-then. I'll insert some blank lines in here. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to set a variable, let's call it x. All right. x equals, pick a number, 5. Okay, so I've said the value x equals 5. Okay, now I'm going to say if x is greater than 3, then enter. Then I'll tab in again. I'll say in here response.write, let's say x is greater than 3. Enter backspace and type in end if. Okay? Everything that happens after the if statement but before the end if statement will happen, this stuff, if x is greater than 3. And I just made x equal to 5. Okay? Let's see what this does. Save it. Switch over to my browser. And then run it. And right here it says x is greater than 3. Now notice it's smashed right onto this line here. We need to insert some kind of a blank line in here, right? What I'm going to do is right before this, I'm going to put a P, a page. Remember that, a paragraph break? That's an HTML command. You can embed HTML inside of your ASP code. All right, now when I save this and refresh my page, look at that. The P is right in here, the paragraph break, so it creates a new paragraph. And it says X is greater than 3. Okay? I can also say if x is greater than, let's just change this. Let's say if x is greater than 8. Okay? And then it'll say x is greater than 8. Save it. And refresh it. And I've got nothing. Why do I have nothing? Because x is not greater than 8. x is only 5. Alright? See how that works? It's ASP making a decision. This is basic, visual basic command. Okay, I can also add an else statement in here as well. I can say, come after this line, enter, and then I'm going to backspace and say else, enter, response, dot write, put the paragraph in there, x is not greater than 8. Okay, so what will happen? I set x equal to 5. If x is greater than 8, then it'll say x is greater than 8. Else, otherwise, if this is not true, if x is less than or equal to 8, it'll say x is not greater than 8. Save it. Switch back over here. Refresh. And there we go. x is not greater than 8. And you can see how, if I change this now to 12, save it, and load it back up again, my web page can make a decision based on a value. Now, in order to see whether it's morning or afternoon, I need to first figure out what the hour is. Okay, the hour. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. And instead of setting x equal to some arbitrary number, let's say x equals whatever the current hour is. Now, how do I get the current hour? That's the date part function. I'm going to say date part... And then in parentheses, I want to say, inside of quotes, the letter H, that stands for hour, I want to get the hour, comma, get the hour of what? Well, I want to get the hour of the current time. So I'm going to send it the time function, just like that. Close up your parentheses, because I have to close this parenthesis right here, right? I've got, this is my open, that's my close, and then I'm done. X equals the date part h of the current time. In other words, what is the current hour? You can use date part to get the hour, the minute, the second, or the date part as well. You can use it to get the month, day, or year. We just want the hour. Okay? Now, I'm going to say right here, response.write, the hour is ampersand x. I want to see what that hour is. 
And in fact, I'm going to need to put a paragraph break in here too. You know what? I'm going to stick the paragraph break up here. Watch this. Ampersand, and I'm going to put my paragraph break up there so that the paragraph break comes after the time is. So I don't have to keep remembering to do it down here. Okay, let's save it and take a look at what we got. Refresh. All right, look at that. Hello there. The time is 3.52.14 p.m. The hour is 15. That's correct. The date part function always returns the value in 24-hour time, or military time, some people like to call it. 15, 1500, is 3 p.m., so that is correct. Now that I know what the hour is, let me tack on a little paragraph break here, and I can say if x is greater than or equal to 12, then response.write good afternoon, else response.write good morning. And if. And just in case you're wondering, ASP is not case sensitive. So lowercase e, capital E there doesn't matter, nor does this matter if that's in the lowercase x. Okay, ASP does not care. All right, save it, control S, flip back to my browser, refresh, good afternoon, because it's almost 4 p.m. Now, someone else looking at your code, or you two months from now, might look at this and go, what is all this? Well, you can insert comments in here. All right. I'm going to put a single quote there and say, calculate current hour. Everything after a single quote on the rest of that line is a comment. In other words, ASP will ignore it. The web server just looks at it and goes, oh, that's a comment. Forget it. And then it continues on with the next line. I strongly recommend you comment your code as much as possible. Don't go crazy, but you want to put in comments wherever you've got something that you might not understand two months from now. Believe me, I've been working with ASP for years and for Visual Basic for decades, and I've got code that I go back sometimes and look at that I built five years ago, and I'm like, well, what was I thinking? So comments are a good way that you can either remind yourself or someone else in your programming team exactly what you're trying to do. Now, this date part function, don't worry too much about this. This is a more advanced function. But I just wanted to show you how, with a simple code, we could make our web page a little more interactive. All right, the web page knows the time. It can tell you what the time is, what the hour is, and then it can start to change the content based on the time. Right, the web page can say good afternoon or good morning based on what time it is. Do you have to remember the exact syntax of every function you're going to come across? No. Sometimes you're going to have to look this stuff up. If you have my handbook for ASP 101, you'll find the code in there. Otherwise, it's not a bad idea to pick yourself up a basic ASP textbook that has all the different functions listed in it. And on the website, I have a list of all the books that I recommend. Here's my list of recommended reading. Just go to ASPLearningZone.com slash books. I've got a list of all the different books that I recommend on there. There are some really good beginner ones, as well as some ones that have all the functions listed in there. After taking my tutorials, of course, you don't have to spend a lot of money on books. In fact, you can just get my handbooks for everything that you need. But if you like to read and you like to explore and experiment, check out my list of books.